Hello students, today's video will be based on nitrogen and its compounds. So we will begin with dinitrogen. We know dinitrogen is a major component of atmosphere. It exists as N2 and occupies near about 70% of atmospheric volume. We can prepare dinitrogen by various methods. The commercial method is by the liquefaction and fractional distillation of air where the liquid nitrogen is distilled out first. But if you want to prepare dinitrogen in the laboratory, then we have various methods. The first method is the heating or thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate where nitrogen as a gas is obtained. Or we can also carry out the heating of barium azide. The thermal decomposition of barium azide will give us nitrogen and this is a method of obtaining pure nitrogen. In the laboratory, nitrogen can be obtained by one more method where ammonium chloride is treated with sodium nitrite where we will get nitrogen as a main product along with water and sodium chloride. In the third method, instead of barium azide, sodium azide can be also used. And this method is considered to be important one. Now what are the properties of nitrogen? It is colorless, odorless, tasteless gas as well as a non-toxic gas and it exists in two types of isotopes N14 and N16. It has very low solubility in water as well as its freezing point and boiling point they are low. In our last video we have already discussed that nitrogen being a element of second period shows anomalous behavior like small atomic size, high electronegativity, high ionization enthalpy, absence of d orbital as well as nitrogen is the third most electronegative element of periodic table. We have already discussed the impact of anomalous behavior that the formation of p pi, p pi multiple bond, catenation, reactivity, inert nature of nitrogen, formation of only four bonds that is four covalency, D pi, P pi multiple bond cannot be formed. It is the most non-metallic and its trihalides are unstable. So all these properties of nitrogen we have already discussed. Some other properties include that at higher temperature the reactivity of nitrogen increases little bit. That means it do not remain inert anymore. But at higher temperature it will combine with metal and non-metal forming nitride metal nitride or non-metal nitride. For example, on reacting with lithium, it forms lithium nitride, magnesium nitride. On reacting with hydrogen, it will form ammonia. On reacting with oxygen, it will form nitric oxide. These metal nitrides, these are ionic in nature, whereas non-metal nitrides, these are covalent in nature. Now these equations can be asked as complete the e equation type question. So we can expect complete the equation type question based on these reactions. Okay, coming to uses, nitrogen has variety of uses. It is used in the manufacture of ammonia as well as other chemicals which contains nitrogen in them. Since nitrogen is inert in nature, it is used as a diluent, inert diluent for reactive metals. Because the reactive metals, their reactions are difficult to control and therefore inert nature of nitrogen helps to control these reactions. As well as liquid nitrogen is used as a refrigerator. Many biological materials as well as food items, they are preserved in liquid nitrogen. So that was about nitrogen. Now we'll discuss compounds of nitrogen. First of all, we are going to discuss for ammonia. Ammonia that is NH3, we all know it is a weak base. Now how it is prepared? There are various methods for the preparation. 
द फर्स्ट मेथड इज बाय डिकम्पोजिशन ऑफ यूरिया एक्चुअली अमोनिया इज प्रेजेंट इन स्मॉल क्वांटिटीज इन एयर एंड सॉइल वेर इट इज फॉर्म बाय द डी ऑफ नाइट्रोजस ऑर्गेनिक मटेरियल लाइक यूरिया urea gets converted to ammonium carbonate and that gets converted to ammonia h2o and co2 now the interesting thing about this reaction is that all the products formed they are gases ammonia as we know it's basic in nature water is neutral and co2 is acidic so this is a reaction where we'll have all the types of product basic acidic as well as neutral so question can be framed on this that in a reaction three products are formed basic acidic and neutral and all are gas all are gases identify the reaction so immediately you, it must be clicked that it is a decomposition of urea okay on small scale we can obtain ammonia by treating ammonium chloride with calcium hydroxide where we'll get ammonia and water calcium chloride will be the by product but on large scale ammonia is prepared by treating nitrogen with hydrogen and that process is known as haber's process very important one so nitrogen is treated with hydrogen to give ammonia the reaction is carried out at 773 kelvin and in presence of catalyst such as iron oxide in 11th class we have studied about lee chatelier's principle so by using lee chatelier principle we can increase the production of ammonia according using lee chatelier principle we have to see that the reaction always proceeds in forward direction so what are the conditions that can be used to increase the production of ammonia first of all we must use the catalyst like iron oxide the reaction is carried out high pressure and low temperature this helps to react move the reaction in the forward direction as well as continuous removal of ammonia continuous removal of ammonia will also help reaction to move forward and therefore overall the production of ammonia can be increased let us discuss its properties ammonia when ammonia is formed out of five electrons present in the valence shell of nitrogen three are used in making the bond pair with hydrogen and one lone pair will be left in this case nitrogen is sp3 hybridized and the shape of ammonia is pyramidal why the shape of ammonia is pyramid so as to avoid the repulsion between lone pair and bond pair the bond angle is 107.8 degree which is less than the expected one ammonia is a colorless gas and it has a very strong very pungent smell whenever you have carried out salt analysis in the laboratory you must have experienced the pungent smell of ammonia when we are carrying out salt analysis of ammonium salts okay coming to its freezing point and boiling point the freezing point is 198.4 kelvin but its boiling point is very high 239.7 kelvin now the question is why ammonia shows high boiling point because ammonia molecules they are associated by hydrogen bonding and we know more the hydrogen bonding more will be boiling point ammonia is highly soluble in water and when it dissolves in water it dissociate to form nh4 plus and oh minus ion and due to this presence of oh minus ion it is weakly basic as well as i will say the lone pair of nitrogen it can be donated and therefore it is weakly basic in nature now ammonia it precipitate hydroxides of many metals especially from their salt solution for example let us consider zinc sulfate when it is treated with ammonium hydroxide we get zinc hydroxide and ammonium sulfate where zinc hydroxide is obtained in the form of white ppt if ammonium hydroxide is treated with ferric chloride then it gives brown ppt 
which is of ferric oxide along with the formation of ammonium chloride okay just now i have told you that presence of lone pair on nitrogen in ammonia will make it is a lewis base because this lone pair can be donated now this is the presence of lone pair which can be donated that makes ammonia as a strong ligand this is your important give reason question that why ammonia is a strong ligand and write the reactions to prove that ammonia on reaction with cupric ion form the complex which is deep blue in color we know how to form silver chloride silver chloride is in the form of white ppt silver ion are colorless but this when this white ppt silver chloride when it is treated with ammonia it will form the complex of silver and ammonia which will be colorless one now all these three reactions they are asked as complete the equation type question and these are frequently asked in your board exams and therefore i will mark all these three reactions as an important one let us discuss the uses of ammonia ammonia is used to produce various nitrogenous fertilizers liquid ammonia is also used as a refrigerator and it is used in the manufacture of nitric acid and therefore our next compound that we are going to study is nitric acid nitric acid is prepared by oswald's process now this process is important one you must know the names of all these processes there are three steps involved in oswald's process in the first step ammonia is passed through air which is full of oxygen in the presence of catalyst and at 500 kelvin 9 bar where we will get nitric oxide that nitric oxide is further treated with oxygen to give nitrogen dioxide this nitrogen dioxide on dissolving in water will give nitric oxide now why this oswald process is considered as an important one have a look at the third step in third step you have got the by product as nitric oxide which can be used again in the second step all those industrial processes where the by product can be used again they becomes important one because they save the resources and therefore oswald process is considered as a important process now this nitric oxide obtained is 68% by mass then it is converted by fractional distillation sorry dehydration with concentrated h2so4 where we'll get 98% hno3 by dehydration with concentrated h2so4 now the interesting thing about nitric acid is that nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent please remember this nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent now why because in nitric acid nitrogen is in its highest oxidation state plus 5 therefore it can't be oxidized further it can be only reduced and therefore it will act on a strong oxidizing agent on the other hand its counterpart nitric acid hno2 if we consider that nitrogen in this is in plus 3 oxidation state which is an intermediate oxidation state therefore nitric acid can be oxidized to plus 5 oxidation state as well as it can be reduced to minus 3 oxidation state and therefore hno2 can act as reducing agent as well as it can act as oxidizing agent but nitric acid will act as only and only oxidizing agent let us discuss the properties of nitric acid it's a colorless liquid with freezing point 231.4 kelvin and boiling point 355.6 kelvin just now we have seen that laboratory nitric acid contains 60% hno3 by mass 
Now, if we consider the structure of nitric acid, it is a planar structure. Nitric acid is a planar structure. But there is a difference in the bond length. Now, if you can see here, nitrogen oxygen bond length is 121 picometer. Whereas NO bond length in NOH, it is 140.6 picometer. In both cases, nitrogen is bonded with oxygen. But here it is 121 picometer and NOH, this NO bond length is 140.6 picometer. Reason? It is due to resonance. Because of resonance, the bond length NO, it is short, 121 picometer. So, this is one of the give reason question that why there is a difference in the bond length of NO in nitric acid. The mixture of nitric acid and HCl in the ratio of 3 to 1 is called as aquargia and this mixture can dissolve gold as well as silver. Otherwise, nitric acid in its form do not attack gold and silver noble metals but when it is mixed with HCl in the ratio of 3 to 1, it will attack gold and silver and therefore it is used in the purification process. Nitric acid is considered as a strong acid because when it is dissolved in water, it will give hydronium ion along with NO3- that is nitrate ion. Since nitric acid is strong oxidizing agent, it oxidizes almost all metals except noble metals like gold and silver. Like Dilute nitric acid will oxidize copper to copper nitrate. Here the oxidation state of copper changes from 0 to plus 2. Similarly, concentrated nitric acid oxidizes copper to copper nitrate. Remember the changes in the oxidation number and nitrogen itself get reduced. Like in NO, the oxidation state of nitrogen is minus 2. We know nitrogen oxidation state in nitric acid is plus 5. So, there is a reduction. Again, in the second example, nitrogen form plus 5 oxidation state will get reduced to plus 4. Now, similarly, nitric acid oxidizes zinc also. When ni dilute nitric acid is treated with zinc, zinc gets oxidized to zinc nitrate. Zinc from 0 oxidation state is converted to plus 2 oxidation state. If concentrated nitric acid used, then also zinc will oxidize to zinc nitrate. Remember the changes in the oxidation states that will help you to understand the equations easily. Now the thing is that all these reactions appear to be same one. How to remember them? One thing is sure that whenever a metal reacts with nitric acid, will get metal nitrate. So, your one product is confirmed one. Pay attention to these two reactions. In both cases, concentrated nitric acid is reacting with zinc. Sorry, zinc as well as copper. Now, the byproducts in both cases are same. Water as well as NO2. So, the reaction becomes very simple. You frame a nitrate of the given metal and the byproducts are same one, H2O on nitrogen dioxide. Whereas in case of reaction of dilute nitric acid with metal, again we know that nitrate will be formed. So I am considering now dilute nitric acid, nitrate, metal nitrate formed, that is a sure question. Again water is the common byproduct. In case of copper, we will get NO as a byproduct and in case of zinc, we will get N2 as byproduct. This is the only difference. So, if you remember the common byproducts, it will be very easy for you people to remember these reactions as all these reactions are asked as complete the equation type question. Now, since nitric acid act as a strong oxidizing agent, we have to study some more reaction. Like nitric acid oxidizes iodine to iodic acid. The changes in oxidation state, iodine from zero oxidation state will get converted to plus 5. 
सिमिलरली नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड ऑक्साइडाइजेस कार्बन टू सीओ टू इट ऑक्साइडाइजेस सल्फर टू सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड सल्फर ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इन एच टू एसओ फोर इज सॉरी प्लस सिक्स इट ऑल्सो ऑक्सीडाइजेस फॉस्फरस टू फॉस्फरिक एसिड वेयर फॉस्फरस फ्रॉम इट्स जीरो ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट गेट्स कन्वर्टेड टू प्लस फाइव ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट Now all of you are familiar with brown ring test. What is a brown ring test? We make OS of the given salt, and to this OS we add freshly prepared FeSO4. And to this mixture we add nitric acid from its side. Sorry, we are adding H two S O four along the side of the test tube. Now we know brown ring test is generally done for those salts which contain nitrate anion in them. Okay. So when we perform this test, we get a brown colored ring. at the junction of two solutions and therefore this test is known as brown ring test now actually this test depends on the ability of fe2+ to reduce nitrate to nitric oxide then which further react with fe2+ to form this brown colored complex fe h2 whole 5 no2+ all of you must perform this brown ring test in the lab during salt analysis during the confirmatory test of nitrate ions this is your important viva question also as well as it is asked in je write a formula of the complex which is formed during brown ring so what is brown ring test where fe2 plus gets oxidized to fe3 plus and we get a brown colored ring so that was all about the properties of nitric acid let us discuss the uses of nitric acid nitric acid is one of the widely used chemical in the industry for the production of many compounds like it is used in manufacture of ammonium nitrate for fertilizers it is used in the manufacture of h2so4 by late chamber process it is used in the manufacture of dyes perfumes silk as well as nitrates for the use of explosive TNT that is trinitrotoluene this we have already studied in organic chemistry is one of the most strongest explosive that is used by using nitric acid and lastly nitric acid being a strong oxidizing agent it is used as an oxidizer so that was all about the processes the properties the preparation methods of nitrogen and its compounds so based on today's video here are certain assignment questions for you people you can easily solve them that's all for the day thanks for watching have a nice day